Welcome to the Lawrence Garden Farm. Today we're gonna to take you on a June garden tour of the gardens and we hope you guys enjoy. Here's our herb garden and I absolutely love it. One of my favorites in the herb garden is the purple basil. I love how it smells. It Can I smell too? Yeah, you like that? Yeah, that's a good one. It smells like black licorice. I know some of you may Can not I like I that smell, smell it? but it's so strong. And what we do a lot of times is we come out to the herb garden and we'll pick a few of the leaves, we'll shake the plants on the nights that we're out here enjoying the gardens and it really accentuates that smell throughout the entire garden and it just gives it a really good yeah. smell. Yep. And then like a lot of the other beds, she's got different things mixed in with the herbs. So got zinnias. Yep. And that's the, that's the dreamland variety, which I love. You guys have heard me talk about that variety a lot. Yeah. It only gets 12 to 16 yeah. inches. So it doesn't like outgrow anything or overtake anything. It just adds that perfect pop of color. Yep. And so I asked you the other day what these were again, because I really like these. These are new yeah. this year. So these are the Verbena bonariensis and I love them. And we actually seed started these in the house Ooh, and then we transplanted good. them out they in the greenhouse this year. And um, they're just amazing because they just add that perfect texture and color in the yeah, garden. Yeah, and I like the height too. It's just something different to kind of mix in. What's really cool about the Verbena bonariensis is that there's all kinds of growth along the stem. So if you really wanted to, as soon as the flower was done, you could cut it at any point that you see those growths. And that's where those new growths will start. And anything below that on the stem will fill in. And that's how you get the Verbena bonariensis to become a bushier plant rather than just, you know, random little red, random little stakes of Verbena. Yeah, yep. So it's kind of cool. Yep. And, and then it's it's located too close to the house so mm -hmm. we can if we need something yeah run out here it's the first raised bed that we can get to to cut yeah. something off and yeah chop i it think up. so far the the number one thing that i've used in here is our parsley right yeah. here and i've used some of our peppermint in a drink <laughs> we had a long <laughs> where was i already. for that one <laughs> <laughs> you were gone <laughs> probably buzzing his head <laughs> So what's your favorite in the garden, Lana? Yeah. How I can smell all of the flowers. Yeah, Aww. yep. Yeah. And do you like, uh, let's see. I like... What does I this like smell like to you? Lime. Like lemon or lime? Lemon, lemon balm. Lemon balm. Yeah. Mm, so what's good. really cool about the lemon balm is that this returned from last year. So this, I never even knew was a perennial, but I was very surprised because it's a two foot high raised bed. And with our cold winters here in Wisconsin, mm, it actually better. returned for us. So it was a bonus and it smells amazing. And yep. one of you that, um, that subscribe here and watch uh, gave us kind of an idea of how to use the herbs. You said to take them in the house and boil them in, in water. Oh, yes, that's and right. Then steams and smells yeah. of the house and it did. Yeah, so we tried that With and the basil. yeah, I remember I walked in the house and it was just yeah. in the pot cooking on the stove and it just overtook the whole house. He's it like, was, mm, what's cooking? I'm like, nothing, yeah. but the house smells amazing. Yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> oh, and then so Lana, oh, yes, it smells good. Lana's got, does millet smell? <laughs> I got some <laughs> <laughs> I saw it come out of your nose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Um, Unless that I, was something else. So there, there's millet in a lot of these gardens because this is something that the golden finch is like and a lot of the others too. Yeah. So we get birds randomly just perusing the garden. Hey, let me. Yeah. Yep. I Be like careful they, though because you'll get yeah, some stuff in your nose. Don't break it and then it'll get, it'll get in your Ooh. nose. Here you want to try? It just smells like bird seed. 
But as soon as it starts seeding out like this and gets the light color on the plume, that's when the birds start to come in and they land in. I always like to place it near our windows inside of the house because then that way we're able to watch it from inside of the house um, if we're not in the garden, which is actually very rare. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so this is the next raised bed here. Um, one of my favorites because it's got a lot of color in it and it's close to the deck where we sit. It attracts a lot of hummingbirds with the, uh, the different types of, of flowers that are in here. Yep, I always know that this is one of Jason's favorites. Like Jason said, I always throw a lot of extra flowers, things that can really attract hummingbirds. That way when we're sitting, we can watch them come in. Um, things such as Wendy's Wish here, Salvia. Uh, this is one of the biggest attractors for the hummingbirds this season. Another oldie but goodie for us in our garden is one of Lana's favorites. And what's this called, Lana? <laughs> Blue Victoria. Salvia. Yep. Blue yep. Victoria Salvia. You've heard me talk about that one a lot as well. But, um, you know, it's cool because that's actually. Huh? Do they attract hummingbirds? Yeah, they so they do attract hummingbirds. And what's really neat about the Blue Victoria Salvia for us this year is um, last fall. We've been getting fall, lots of hummingbirds. Yes, we've been getting lots of hummingbirds mm -hmm. on them. And last fall, we actually seed saved from our own Blue Victoria Salvia. And seed started and grew all of our own Blue Victoria Salvia this year from what we saved, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yep. It always feels more like, I don't know, like good. Yeah, I, I mean it was pretty cool. Like, Most a lot of the stuff was in was in the greenhouse and yeah. being able to like bring it out here like not quite this size yet, but close to it because it was established in the greenhouse. Yeah. It was nice because there was some instant gratification too with planting this here. Mm -hmm. It just, things were already a little bit bigger because we were able to grow them in there, so. In the greenhouse and everything. Yep, yep. so let's talk food because we know that's what you're wondering. What's in here that's food? Because yes. that's one of the most important things about having your own garden is growing your own food. Wait. Um, so one of the main foods in here is cabbage and kohlrabi. So we did more of the red cabbages in this garden to kind of create that colorful, vibrant leaf. So not only just for the food, but also to kind of create that texture and that color intermixing with everything else surrounding it that's flowers. Yes, it adds like a, a pop. So you've got all green here and then you've got a pop of like a cool green and, and purple. Yep, and as it gets larger, the leaf gets even more vibrant purple and deeper and darker. And then right here we have the kohlrabi. And this is a giant variety called Kosak. And what we love about the kohlrabi is slicing it thin and we kind of like toss it in a bowl with olive oil, black pepper, garlic powder, and salt. Yeah. And Parmesan cheese. Yeah, they- <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> they get big though. So, I mean, right yeah. now this thing's the size of a, of a golf ball and it'll end up being about the size of my head. Yeah, it's a really large kohlrabi yeah. variety. and. Um, and then we lay it on a pan and bake it at 350 for about 20 minutes. And it's all, it's just so, it's just goodness. Yeah, it's it's good. goodness. It's you don't good. even know you're eating a vegetable, but maybe by then it's not as healthy. I don't know. Yeah, wow, it's still healthy. It doesn't taste healthy, but it's good. <laughs> and then over in here, Jason noticed some little areas of Lana. What? What's this here? Cilantro. Uh, yep, perfect yep. for guacamole and our other Mexican favorites. <laughs> Well, oh, Jason tacos. eats it mostly in his guacamole and we love it in our pico, which we have an easy recipe we plan on sharing with you this year. Super easy to make. Um, we also have along the edge, and this is in a lot of the raised beds, I randomly seeded little, little areas of peas. Mm. So this is a new pea variety for us this year. It's a shelling pea, it's called the first 13. It's a new large variety with 13 peas in a pot. Oh wow, Yeah. nice. So these would normally need to be trellised as you can tell. So these would normally need to be trellised as you can tell. They're really starting to kind of entangle in each other. You can see other. all the vines are, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, but with the two foot high raised beds, I keep training them to just trail over rather than entangle themselves on other vegetables or flowers surrounding them. And that way they can just trail over and that'll be kind of like their natural trellis going downward. Um, going up, a lot of people feel that they have more of a bountiful harvest with them, but we find that we have just as good of a harvest going down the two foot yep. raised bed as we do going up with And the it looks better too. We're, we like well, going for the looks with these well, raised not beds always. too. Well, maybe in Jason's eye, you. but I mean, if you go <laughs> up a lot, <laughs> you can always add really cool trellises to really add it. I mean, we might do that next year. Yeah, that's you know, true. It, it, would, it would look cool like that too. We could probably build something that, uh, yeah. It's just nice to add like that tall height and that verticalness mm -hmm. in a garden. But then like always, we add a little bit of the millet. We also add it, mix in some flowers just Snap for dragons fun. here. Yep, and one thing that's really special in this garden this year is right here. These are the heliochrism. And as you can kind of tell, I went in a pattern a little bit with them. They kind of like, you know, swirl around yeah. the side. Yep. Um, so heliochrism is special to me because it's a straw flower. It reminds me of my childhood growing up on the farm and working in the fields as a child and um, picking these straw flowers. We picked straw flowers and weeds and bundled them together and took them to markets and hoped we made money with them because there were some hard times growing up as a farmer during droughts, your crop fails and you're, you're left with bundles of weeds. Yep. And Good thing my mom that year planted the heliochrism so that way we were able to mix that into those bundles and um, put food on the table that year. <laughs> yeah, and here, so there's actually one that uh, is in blossom here. Yeah. And it is a really cool looking flower and like, so it's, it's the straw, you said like a straw flower. When you touch the petals like that, it's almost like it's like dry tissue paper. It's yeah. kind of a cool, it's not, it's not like a soft flower petal. You can so hear it. It sounds like paper. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's really neat. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. the one about to blossom here. Yeah. Yeah. And then sunflowers again. So yeah. are these... So this is kind of like a mixture of the bouquet style sunflowers. So they don't get super tall, even though they'll still hit around four feet. Okay. So there'll be a nice like yeah. end cap here. Right. And off in front of them then are the beans, which these will push the beans forward and the, the beans will kind of bush out towards the front, kind of acting as a bushy trailer, like in a container. And then um, as they grow up too, they kind of get a little bit more sparse with leaves on the bottom of the stem. So everything will still get the right amount of sun that it needs in order to grow and produce. The beans are one of my favorites to just walk through and, and snack on. I think um, everything's your favorite to walk through and snack. That could be. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> And this bed here is just mainly our cauliflower and broccolis. And then we just added a little end cap of flowers just for a little color for when we walk through at nighttime or even during the day just to enjoy. Um, these all kind of attract a lot of hummingbirds and bees. Bees love to really go on the inside of these snapdragons and they nuzzle into those flowers and it's really fun to watch. Um, we just have a lot of random sunflowers poking up and then on the end cap here, we always like to make sure to add a lot of flowers. Um, so that way on the inside of the house, we can really watch the nature come yeah, to this section. Yeah, this is another one where the hummingbirds will come up. And, uh... On the end cap here, we did a lot of salvias. We love watching the hummingbirds coming in through our windows here. So one of the hottest salvias here that attracts the hummingbirds is called hot lips. And that's this little red and white salvia right here. And um, this is one of the populars along with Wendy's Wish that we showed you in the last bed. Yeah. Let's talk Tropic Giants for a minute here. <laughs> These are uh, one of my favorites just because of how big they get. Um, they're already just like exploding out of the raised yeah. beds. It looks like there's a, 
a cabbage patch kid like waiting to <laughs> pop out of here and <laughs> <laughs> so this is always a good choice, hon. Yeah, I, I love them. They get a nice large head. So if you're doing cabbage, one of these would be plenty for you if you're not like a, a big cabbage fan, but you just like some for the year. That way you don't have to do multiple plants and it won't take up as much space. We keep, we keep them near the end of the raised bed so they kind of grow on the sides, inward, and off the edge a little bit. That's how we're able to put four in this area and kind of conserve the space a little bit. But their heads get yeah. so huge yeah. by the time we're done. Yeah. It's yep. insane. So these, the oh, yeah. you know, they don't they don't obviously get super tall, but they get really wide and bushy. So to add some height, then we've got sunflowers, and then we've got these guys again. I can't the, remember the name. The verbenas. The verbenas. <laughs> so that'll be like a nice little bouquet here. It'll on be. The end. It'll be a perfect bouquet. <laughs> there we go. Did bouquet, I say that is it wrong? A bouquet, or am I right, wrong? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Midwest. It sounds really. I, I mean, I sound really Midwest. Bouquet? I know that, but is it a nice bouquet from Wisconsin? <laughs> hey, there. It's a good bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then over here we've also got some celery, which I don't do a lot of celery. I do just enough to freeze for soups for the winter. I love celery in a lot of soups. It adds just that perfect flavor. And then over in here we did um, some extra sunflowers in the form of a bee just for fun because last year we did the mammoths and they were just amazing and we left them up all winter long and the birds came in and fed on those sunflowers and ate those seeds all winter long and it was just so much fun to watch. And then on the inside we have the zucchini over here and the zucchini is just doing really well. It was kind of getting like taken over by cucumber beetles in the beginning. I had to use the organic Monterey spray. I used um, the neem oil bliss spray. So all organic options, but um, mixed with those two and me personally out here catching them with uh, a mason jar, um, I finally got it under control. It was like war for two weeks, but um, everything is finally coming out of their um, their destruction and, and finally looking good. So we're very happy with um, with how everything's looking. Oh, yeah. So today we made nature crowns and Lana's wearing hers. So all we did was we went around and we explored and found all kinds of cool stuff. Tell everyone how you made it. So you um, need tape or glue or you need a, what is it called again? A stapler, tape, and glue. The tape, you can stick all the things on that are big, and the glue is for the tiny flowers. And um, you need a strip of paper, and then you staple it in the back so it yep. so you can put it on. Yep, and Sayla probably won't be able to wear hers for a week, because she chose glue over tape, and I mean like globs of glue, so I'm like, that's gonna take a while to dry. Otherwise, she's gonna, if she puts it on, it'll end up with glue in her hair. Right, so it'll right. be a while. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you see me or Casey popping in or out of the video, we're just tending to the kids and we don't have to stop filming yeah. to do that. So this is awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. Just keep rolling. <laughs> and then off of the end here, I actually don't even remember what I put here, but I seeded. I seeded over here. So. Oh, look at this. So I what wanted to be? show you quickly. Um, so here's a, here's a cucumber beetle, but he's totally dead. And um, what helps with that is with the neem oil, I actually did a neem oil soak in, in the garden. And all that is is spraying the surface of the soil with the neem oil because it can also act as a systemic. And a lot of times those cucumber beetles like to come right on in um, to the area where the, the stems meet with the soil here. And that's where they like to eat. And then you don't really know that they're there a lot of times until all of a sudden your plants wilted it because it's already eaten from the bottom. Kind of like, a, what do they call those little woodchucks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like a, an insect like that, that just chews away at, chomps away at it, and then it's gone before you know it. Um, but a lot of times a great way to check for them is just, just even go on your foliage like this. You may even see them, but as soon as you go like this, they'll fly up and um, that's how you know they're there. And the soaks really helped like that way, but the Monterey is what kind of 
was like that instant if they were there it just like suffocated them and got rid of them right you know right Alright, so the next bed here has got a combo of some different things. We've got some zinnias, we've got onions, we've got snapdragons, millet again. But Casey just pointed out, she was kind of looking at the onions here, and they have some thrips, which has been an ongoing battle pretty much always. Always. And if you're, if like me for example, I don't know a ton about gardening. If I were to see leaves starting to curl a little bit, I might think that they weren't watered enough. So then I would water them and then I would read that, you know, if you overwater them, it can give that same look. And a lot of times it's thrip. So if you see the leaves starting to curl on a plant and you see little um, brown streaking and just things aren't looking right, check deeply to see if there's thrip or not. And there's different ways that you can do that. And where it's browning, you'll also notice like a little bit of like a reflection, almost a silveriness. That's thrip as well. And with onions, the best way to know you have thrip is when they start to look curly like this. If they're not standing up tall and straight going towards the sun, and they're starting to already kind of lay over a little bit when they're so immature, um, it's, it's, it's thrip. So um, curliness equals thrip. So... Um, I just looked at them closely. I saw that there was a lot on them. So we will be treating them later tonight um, with the Monterey spray again. And then um, we'll kind of just go from there and see what happens. So um, like Jason said, we kind of put the Dreamland Zinnias in the middle. So I, I kind of put them in the middle of each variety. So they're split up in different varieties. So this is like a, a yellow onion, a large Walla Walla yellow onion. And then over here is just a white Spanish onion. So we kind of divided them in sections with that beautiful flower and then over here on the end we also do have um, some melons just starting they kind of had a slow start because they also dealt with those cucumber beetles and um, cucumber beetles like anything that's very small and just sprouting it's it's like delicious to them it's it's a great entree for them mm -hmm. and um, that's why they kind of are a little are a little behind but they're catching up yeah, now. Yeah, they'll get going and then yeah. we can eat them. So uh, cantaloupes, watermelons, what uh, what do we got? I have no idea, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out when they uh, when Surprise! they come into their own. So. <laughs> we'll see. I'm pretty sure though they're watermelon. Yeah. Like a cool. crimson sweet, I think. Um, based upon their leaf, it looks more like a crimson sweet, so. Grapes, and I just had a grape sucker. I don't know if it's the snapdragon or if it's your strawberry fingers. It's your fingers! <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got the pickling cucumbers over here. And uh, this is just a bush pickle is what they're called. And uh, we kind of place little spurts of them randomly. We like to place them on the edges so they can grow and trail over, kind of like you do container gardening. We keep a lot of the trailers close closest to the edges so that way they can grow over the side right but we always make sure that they're on a side where they're getting enough sunlight as well so. yep so this is facing the south so plenty of sun yeah. over here mm -hmm. Here we used flowers to separate out varieties. So we did an end cap with a few flowers and a new tomato we're trying this year called Bumblebee. We seed started that ourselves. It's a cherry tomato, but it's artesian. So I'm really excited for you to yes. try that because you love I'm those a tomato beer. lover for yeah. sure. So I like trying all the different kinds and, and you, I did you like, like the artesian. With your, with so. your eggs. Yes, yes, yeah. yep. So I'll take the tomatoes and throw them in the pan with the eggs. I'll chop them up or at least cut them in half and I'll just kind of, you know, 
work them in there with the eggs and it's just like a nice well, little topping. We'll have to have a video so. on Jason making eggs for Nothing all too of us, complicated, not just but. himself. <laughs> I come, I come out, I get up in the morning, you know, he's up or whatever. And then the girls get up and then all of a sudden I see him eating. I'm like, huh. You I got to take you care it for one. To, you know, to make sure that I'm, that I'm properly taking care of everybody else. I got to take care of myself first. <laughs> You know, and then, then I've got the I can that, take care of energy. myself first, and then you can take care of yourself, but then no. I can take care of you. <laughs> anyway, so we went from peppers to marigolds, which I'm loving this variety. It's called Fireball. We uh, seed started this, and it's our first year trying this variety, and it's so beautiful. Starts out dark, like reddish orange, goes into light um, orange, all the way to yellow almost, and it's amazing. And then we have our carrots here. And then we go into Dreamland zinnias and millet, a little bit of verbena banariensis. And then we go back into some more peppers. Um, like always, I just randomly toss in a few peas to kind of trail off the side because we love peas. And then over here we have the verbena imagination. I just love how it's just so light and airy and colorful. And just vibrant purple too. Very, very, yeah. And then we got more peppers, some Swiss chard. And a couple goodies on the end with some pickling cucumbers and a tomato just for, for fun. Yep, and one thing I'm just gonna point out is I love how Casey does the, this garden you can see really well is in like diagonal patterns. So you've got the peppers, you've got the zinnias and millet, the carrots, the marigolds, they're all running at, at angles. So yeah. It, it looks really cool. It's just kind of like, well, why not? You know, it's a little bit of garden art. You know? and, and this sunflower is just a random. It reseeded from last year, which we always have a lot of reseeding, but I was just kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to leave that one. And is this a mammoth? I think it is because this is the garden where we grew a lot of those tall mammoths yeah. last season. So this thing will get way, way up yeah. there. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see that. Yeah. Yep. here we have June bearing strawberries this bed here is called sparkle variety and it's super sweet has medium to smaller size berries and we absolutely love them this bed over here we have no clue the name of the strawberries because we put a tag in it and then over the winter it just right. like blew away and we had no idea and but luckily, they're, we, we like those berries, but they're not our favorites. These are our favorites. I don't know. So this year, this year yeah. though, they were a little bit sweeter than they were last year. So Casey fertilized yeah, more. Um, the ones in this bed here are bigger. They're juicier. I actually like those ones. Those ones better than, than I mean, these ones really? are still really good too, but. I don't know. I have no complaints on they're either. They're all good. Um, <laughs> but this year we, fertilized using an organic fertilizer called Agro Thrive. It's a new organic fertilizer that we've used and I absolutely loved it. We've seen results between our strawberries to our tomatoes and I used it twice this season, only in spring, not in fall. I use it at the end of April and then at the at the beginning of May. So I only used it twice, put in the beds, watered it in and the berries are sweeter than ever. So that's gonna definitely be our go-to fertilizer for this year. We kind of alternate now between the Agro Thrive and the Espoma organic fertilizer in all of our edible beds. In our in our um, flowering containers, we aren't organic, but in all of our beds that have edible food in it, we do not use chemical fertilizers. We use the organic fertilizers. And before this year, we always used Espoma, but now yeah, we're we'll, kind of, you know, in between the two. We're now. like in the Agro Thrive. We'll, we'll put a link for the Agro Thrive in the description. And so we didn't get to this strawberry in time, but you can see the size of this. This is probably like, you know, two, three times the size of the berries that are in the, the bed over here. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. But as you can see, I mean, there's so many berries in here and they're so large and i mean they're even just draping over over the sides and um there's always just so many to pick 
So this year I'm going to make some jam. If you have a good jam recipe, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. And then um, we're going to freeze some just like we always do. We also love to make homemade fruit roll-ups in the dehydrator, mm -hmm. which we have our recipe already on our channel. Um, what is that, in the garden, in, rec in the recipes? I think so. Yeah. I have no idea. Well, <laughs> I'll put the link for it in the video. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, they're all so delicious. And what's really great about growing them organically is, you know, yeah, you can wash your berries. There's always stuff on them, but you don't have to. You can literally just eat them right from the garden. Yeah. You know, one thing too, I'm just going to mention really quick. So we are actually going to have um, in the future here, our own strawberries that you would be able to purchase from us. Mm -hmm. And kind of wanted to get a little bit of feedback. So along with strawberries, um, some of the other flowers and plants that you see in our gardens, we're gonna have available on our website. It's something new that we're gonna be doing and I kinda mm -hmm. wanted to throw it out there to get a little bit of feedback and, and ask, you know, if we were selling strawberries, plants and flowers online, is that something that you'd be interested in uh, in purchasing? So just wanted to yeah, throw it out there. Yeah, we figure that we'd like to make it a little easier for everyone. Everyone's always trying to, you know, find the seeds or the flower that we're talking about and uh, we just kind of want to make it just easier right we so we actually this year got some experience with getting some trees and some plants shipped to us online and it's the first time that we did it and that's we kind of started to like it just like with Amazon the first time you order something on Amazon for me anyways it was like a big leap and now anytime I need something <laughs> I order it on there so that it's kind of the same month. thing <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know instead of going to the greenhouse you can just have it all right well, in your doorstep everybody still loves to go to a greenhouse right. and you still so, want to go to the greenhouse you got to get that feeling but you know sometimes for those specialty items that you always find that are sold out as soon as you go you know you think you're going early but you're not early enough because right. you know right. everyone already so. bought it you can now find it online. Yep. So let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah. We'd really appreciate the feedback on that. Yep. Strawberries. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> and I'm going to get some more. Ready? <laughs> oh, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a red eye. All right, Literally. I'll try one here. <laughs> in and out. I think I got some in my eye there. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go check out the first bed that got mm -hmm. planted this year, the peas. Yep. So. Woo! Whoa. <laughs> it looks really good. So I have to say, this is actually one of my favorite edible garden designs that I've done this year. I think because it's going to produce very well, it's laid out really well, and it's thought out really well for the growth of all plants. Um, so number one is the way that we seeded our peas. You guys saw me seed this in the beginning of April. After April, we had how many freezes and snow covers, and we do nothing to help our peas. We just let them go, and they do amazing when we seed them that early. So when I seeded them, I seeded them just around the perimeter of the garden because I knew that once it was a little nicer out and we were clear of those frosts, that I would go in there and kind of fill in with some extra vegetables and flowers. But surprisingly, I actually went ahead and filled in with more vegetables. So what I did in the center was I added two red cabbages. In the center of that, I added just my little perk of colorful flowers with the Dreamland zinnias. And then I went ahead and planted the, the onions right along on each side. And in between, I actually went ahead and uh, seeded some of the lettuce. So what I like about the lettuce on the inside of the onions is that it, it kind of gives it a little bit of cover, but yet it still gets enough sun. But with the cabbage right here, it kind of also adds a little bit of like that protection from the hot all day sun. Because lettuce a lot of times won't they won't like a lot of that hot heat, hot sun midsummer. That's kind of when they kind of, eh, you sometimes need a little bit of like a, a tunnel or cover to kind of give them that little break. And that's kind of what the cabbage acts as, is that little break for that lettuce. So we'll have some really good lettuce along with some of that cilantro, which Jason's drooling over right now, if you can see it. <laughs> I'm actually just really amazed. So when you 
Um, when we first planted up the box here and you did all the peas on the outside, you know, you told me you were gonna do that because you were gonna put stuff on the inside and I never envisioned like this is how it would look, but how it looks right now with mm -hmm. everything trailing over is so cool. It, it reminds me like if there was gonna be a, a garden parade, this could be like a float. You know, like with all the, the peas hanging off of it. And the flare. Casey, the, the garden queen, could be sitting in, oh, the, uh, in the in the float waving and throwing peas to the kids in the crowd. Poke your <laughs> um, eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it looks, yeah, it we, looks great. I, so we just right now have some peas ready. So Solana, if you want to um, show everyone your peas. Solana right now found a pod that was ready. I got one too. And this variety is called Maxigo, and um, we love this variety. It's it's a shelling pea, and um, we also like you know edible pea pods. But I've been a pea fan since I was little. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this has now become my number one favorite pea mm -hmm. variety. So every year now we have to have it, right, Lana? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So. so these to you are the best tasting peas. I like them because we get about eight peas per pod and I, I like that they're a bigger pea as well so to me they are there are sweeter varieties um, but for me I, I yeah, love I, a shelling pea I really like these ones too I, mm -hmm. yeah Do you there's like a, them? there's a lot that are still coming but yeah. here <laughs> and there you can them. find some that are that are actually done here mm -hmm. oh here one too. <laughs> Mine. <Yeah. laughs> Little yep. So there's eight, eight exactly here. So I plan on coming out real early tomorrow and um, eating all the peas. No picking them. I'll pick them. I'll save you one. <laughs> you one. <laughs> no, I always save them stuff. It's so nice to see the kids come out and enjoy fresh food because. Even Sayla, for example, she's such a sweet eater. I mean, I catch her in the Hershey's all the time. And I Marshmallow, up she, we've got a step ladder in the pantry. She is like constantly up and oh. up, yeah, up on the top shelf no. getting marshmallows no. and chocolate. And she graduated from the step ladder. She now <laughs> learned she can actually just step and use the shelves oh, as the step yeah. ladder. I'm like, oh gosh, I can only see what's gonna happen Yeah, there. one day, crash. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be at work, I'll get a call at work, you know. <laughs> What am I supposed to do about now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is, uh, this. sorry, I cut you off there before you even, <laughs> this is one of my favorite beds, that's why I wanted to, to talk about it. Um, and it's very similar to how it was last year. Mm -hmm. This is one that I just, I spot, you know, whenever I'm over by the house, because it just looks really cool. So there's snapdragons through here and then all the way across so when these are all in blossom you've got this and all different colors going all the way mm -hmm. through there um, you do have the uh the flowering kale um two different kinds the zinnias the millets and then this is different from last year these are sunflowers that are back here yep so, so we did, um, this will give it some height here right yep so that's the pro cut variety so it won't get too tall it's more of that mid height yeah Mm -hmm. And your but, favorite on the end in the corner there. So on the back corners, then we have the Verbena bonariensis again. I just added it in there for a lot of texture, and we seeded a lot of it this yeah. year. So, but this <laughs> place it somewhere. This when it's in full, it's full glory. It'll be cool because with these yeah. being heightened like that, it's just gonna kind of be like a a, waterfall a stepping effect. down waterfall. And yep. yeah, it's I'm really excited to see this one grow up and yep. get big. Especially with this Vista Petunia here. This is really nice. It gets bushy and full and it'll trail towards the front, but it just adds that pop of really vibrant color in the front there. And um, it's just kind of like the Vista Bubblegum Petunia. I mean, you guys heard me talk about that one as well. It kind of just does its thing. Um, even without pinching, it just gets that full bushiness and it's just beautiful and perfect. Yeah. So yep. I wanted to just add that little ball and bubble of, of color there. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll take a little break from the raised beds and let's go check out Casey's creation in the in the sitting area over there. Yep. So, so it's really good. You guys know I'm a window box fan and usually over in our sitting area we have a hanging basket and I always feel like that the sides are spare. So then I always end up having to add in container gardens on the side and I just end up keep adding to that area just to make it feel full. So this year I just really wanted to create like uh, a flower wall. So what I did was I did small little window boxes and staggered them and filled them with all kinds of great goodies that were flowering and textured and trailing and um, it just gave it like that complete feeling and I wanted to paint them the same color as the exterior of the house so that way they just kind of blended and that way the flowers would be the main focus. Right, and it, it worked out perfectly. It, yeah, because when, when we were first kind of talking about designing it, we were actually talking about, you know, taping off the wood and creating like a design with stain and paint yep. and um, and then, you know, when it came down to it, I'm like, I don't want the focus to be the pattern on the boxes. Oh, I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the focus to be on the flowers. And Lana, I'm fuzzy, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, something really cool. Um, something that a lot of you guys have been following us on is the birch log container. And uh, in the spring, Jason made this what? for me. Ow! I you can't... kept my foot. Are you okay? You kept my foot. I stepped in there and all of a sudden, I felt something by my foot, it was fuzzy. Oh no. Um, so in the spring, I handed Jason this birch log and said, here, make me a container. And then um, he just kind of worked at it, even though it could have been a lot easier. Yeah, I think <laughs> next time I'll, I'll get some different tools to do this. I have like a like a, a tomahawk that I use and a hammer and even a screwdriver for a little bit. I mean, so it, it was, was crazy. It I looked, was, like I went over there, it looked like a woodchuck, like, created a mess over <laughs> there. was there. just, yeah, wood chips everywhere. But anyway, so um, we planted, we started off with violas in there and I kind of tore those out because I knew that those weren't gonna last all summer. Um, but when I tore them out, I left the soil in, so the nice rooted soil. And then I went ahead and added these succulents in there by adding a little hole with the scissors. I cut the succulents and placed just their stems in there. And now they don't move because they're rooted in there. They're rooted really nicely in that soil. That's what's really cool about succulents is you can literally just cut them and stick them and they will root as long as you keep the soil a little bit more moist so that way the roots go towards the moisture. One of my favorite flowers this year is the summerific variety of hibiscus and this one is the French vanilla. So it gives you so many blooms and we have a few other of these colors and yeah. this is from Walter's Gardens. They were so kind to send us all kinds of perennials this year for our gardens and we will give you guys a tour and an update of that project right. as well. Right, we, we use tons of perennials in, in the berms and yeah, so there's some other colored ones out there but these just look so yeah. incredible. Yeah, they're amazing. So we just recently decorated the steps with all of these plants. These are some of our plants from inside of the house and we wanted to take them outside for a little bit of nature's loving out here. Yep, it stages up the deck really nice and gives it a nice uh, jungle-ish jungle -ish feel. A nice it. tropical summer tropical. feel. That's and we were also able to plant them up into a larger size of a pot so that way their roots can continue to grow. So they got that natural rainwater last night. They're getting the natural sun, not just through a window. Um, and they're just really enjoying this summer weather that we're having other than tonight. Didn't think I'd have to bring out the flannel. Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> little chilly tonight. Yeah. Um, and one other thing before we leave this area is the the banana tree. So this yeah. was something that all winter long we had growing in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people asking about it, yeah. and it's 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 outside. So some of the leaves got tattered, but it's looking a lot better. Yeah. There's there's new leaves that are constantly being produced here, mm -hmm. and they look a nice healthy deep green again so yeah and this is a blood banana tree and usually you want to keep them in a more protected area which i i kind of thought this would be a little bit more of a protected area but out of nowhere we got all these heavy winds and i shouldn't say out of nowhere because we kind of are known to get those heavy winds in springtime yeah and they come from the west yeah and just 
now but hey they gotta... whipped it but now we're getting some nice new leaves and it did have spider mites which we used the monterey on and the spider mites are gone but it did have yellowing leaves but now that it's adjusted to its new home it's really adjusting nicely and it's getting back its nice beautiful dark green leaves and um it's variegation on the leaf and um, everything else around it is filling in and um, we're just really enjoying it and it's tropical flair during the summer oh, This garden here already looks like super mature. It grew so fast, but the reason why it looks so huge is because in the back we have some giant mammoth sunflowers along with some ornamental corn, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, in the front we have the tropic giant cabbage with uh, some edible nasturtiums on the front to add that nice vibrant color. And then we do, we do always add a lot of flowers kind of in the front intermix. So that way when we're sitting by the fire, we can enjoy some, some beauty along with the edibles. And these always attract the hummingbirds and the butterflies. So um, not only is it pretty, but it also attracts um, different things in nature that really make us happy. And I believe that that's a really important part about gardening is to also enjoy it. And then what I also love about this is um, right here we have a tomato growing up the trellis. And this tomato is, you know, pretty far along for this time of year. It's a sun sugar cherry tomato, one of Jason's favorites. It's his favorite snacking tomato. It's a golden cherry tomato. And it was already growing in the greenhouse. We've been eating off of this one for months before we are even able to plant outside. So what we did was it was in a really big container with a really big root ball. We planted it into this bed and it's already taking off. As you can see, it's, it's growing up taller and taller. So when we planted it here, we only tied a few of the stems, but then we kind of just allow it to climb on its own because the way it's able to stay up naturally is we did this last year. We used a black eyed Susan vine to be the natural tie for the tomato plant. So as the black eyed Susan vine trails up, it kind of entangles itself around the tomato, but it doesn't take over it. The black eyed Susan vine really kind of just focuses on trailing along um, the panel here. Whereas with the tomato, it kind of gets caught on that and it holds it there, but it kind of grows on each side of the panel. So we're able to walk by and just pick cherry tomatoes as we're able to walk by. And as these vines grow, you know, it will cover the top. We weren't able to reach the top and, and clean the top from last season, but eh, it's okay. Cause then the birds were able to use it for nesting materials. And um, we kind of like our garden to be multi-purpose, not just for us, but for nature as well. And like I said, there you go. Yeah, they're even chilled too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, that's his favorite. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the back here then we have the ornaments of corn going and when I planted this, I shared this with you in another video, we kind of place it in, um, in, a, in a shape of a flower. So the ornamental corn acted as like a stem and leaves, like a very basic drawing, like of a kindergartner. And then the flower head was the seeds of the sunflowers as they came up. Now I don't know, really know if you can see the pattern kind as much. Kind of, a little bit still. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll get the drawing out for that. Yeah, okay, so anyways. <laughs> The reason for the ornamental corn is last year we intermixed the ornamental corn with growing our pickling cucumbers and we grew a lot of pickling cucumbers because we love pickles. Yes, definitely. So um, we did that because then they were able to trail off the side but then they also grew up the corn stalks and we found the best harvest that was growing in the corn stalks. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 just do that because when they trailed off the side, the leaves got yellowy, kind of brown, almost like as if they got like sunburned. Yeah. So they're just a little more protected with the, with the corn. Yeah, they're stuff. very protected. So we're like, well, let's just copy that, but do it in a different form this year. And so we're hoping for the same results and we'll keep you guys updated. Yep. This year, we're kind of going to just trial out some blueberry bushes. This has kind of become like an area where we're starting a, a more of a fruit garden other than the strawberries. Yeah. 
Yep. But um, right here we have uh, some blueberry bushes. We just have three of them here. And then we have strawberries kind of lining the around. <laughs> and um, the reason for that is they, they both like an acidic soil. And this is a new uh, strawberry variety that we're trying out this year called Seascape. It's supposed to be a super sweet berry. And um, when they were growing in the greenhouse, they actually really were super yeah. sweet. Yep. And then once I planted them out here, it's like they go through like an adjustment period to where they're um, not producing as much then. But what we did then to kind of separate out this area from the rest of the bed, since we're just trialing, I didn't want to use up a whole bed for a trial of mm -hmm. blueberries. Um, so what I did then is I actually, let's see here, where do I have it? <laughs> I have it somewhere. Where is it? Oh, here. Okay. Would you bury a bone down there? Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, so I actually dug a board into the bed um, in between the soil here. So it separates out this area from this area, which is like our carrots and kale. Um, so what I really wanted to do was be able to have an area where it was its own soil type. So this area here is amended with more of an acidic soil and an acidic amendment. Um, whereas this is more of just the agro thrive uh, espoma style of fertilizer. So, um, and, I, and, I, and I was kind of trying to figure out how I was going to do that because I didn't want to want to give up a whole nother bed. Yeah, yep, for that's a good idea, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see too the strawberries are starting to really shoot out yeah. and pretty soon it'll kind of cover in right. this whole area here. And, and, and really, I didn't need this many berries here, but we are sent so many bare roots for the trial of this variety. Um, and they're already starting to kind of, you know, shoot out. Right. And what you would really only need is maybe three plants here and they would cover up the whole area by next year. And when they put out these shoots, it's like a whole nother plant on these shoots. And these shoots get roots, which then root in. And that's how they become really bushy um, areas of strawberries. Right, yep, it could really fill this whole area. And, if, uh, and if I don't know it. how this is gonna turn out. I don't know how the blueberries are going to do because you know, we've they're, never they're growing. Really I mean, it's it's definitely got new growth from when we planted it. So. Yeah. Well, we did a trial blueberry garden like when we first started our garden here. When was that? Like five years. Five ago? six years ago. And then um, we forgot about it. Yeah, it just it kind of got overtaken with <laughs> weeds, and it yeah. these already look better than those ever yeah. did. So. Well, it's easier manageable with the weeds and the raised beds, and um, it just it's easier that's yeah. that's the answer yep. it's easier so yeah <laughs> and here is one of our newest garden additions um we added in the stone borders we added in the kids whole gardening section with the kid coop which is the science shed um the fruit tree garden which you already see one fail behind me <laughs> cover that up <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll photoshop that to make the leaves look green <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll go over all of that in another garden tour so we can cover all of those details and all the varieties and perennials. But there is one perennial that is standing out to us right now and that one is Gold Rush Nifopia right here from Walter's Gardens. It's absolutely fabulous. The texture of the actual plant is just so eye-catching and then you have these beautiful colored flowers with texture you know i'm a texture nut i yeah. love texture yep and then when the flower is beautiful in color and then it's an added bonus with the texture right and the name nefophia yeah i mean how can you how can you go wrong with that i i was telling casey when we were sitting over on the deck the other day like when i look this way there's so much green and then i've got like these random they almost look like they're floating because they're taller than everything yeah, else. Yeah. You know, yellow, mm -hmm. yellow spots, which I, it just looks really cool against all the green back set. So. It's amazing. And I never realized how many flowers that a Nifofia plant could have. I never really realized that. Like, you know, I, I mean, I grew up with them, but maybe they're just making them better now. Yeah. To where they bloom so much more and they look so much nicer, but they were such well-established plants. So once again, thank you Walters yes. Gardens for sending those perennials. We yeah, are so enjoying them yes. and we wanted to feature that one, but we will go over this garden real soon with Yeah, you guys. we'll do its own little yeah. tour for it. So. Well, thanks so much for joining us on this garden tour. We are really excited to show you around. 
Yeah, it was so much fun taking you guys around and we can't wait to continue sharing it with you all summer. So if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Take care.